Good morning, everyone. Today's Monday. It is April the 15th, and this is the Futures in 5 Charts. Taking a look at the EFs, we are holding steady. Can't seem to get up and over that 29.14. That is the breakout space. A composite chart would show us right up on the edge of congestion, up over that 29.17 to 29.22. Please remember that it is my estimation that what we have right now is technical movement. We're just moving through the charts, and this morning we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven four-hour charts sitting in this tight range. So what do we expect? We expect pullbacks to be buy zones. Taking shorts in this kind of environment means you have to be very quick or you happen to be able to time the high of the day. What should we do? Well, we should begin to flatten out. But, as I read this morning, I'm going to borrow something that I read. Some analysts said, you know, what the estimations for these current companies are coming out at, they'll be lucky not to trip over them. They're so low. So the analyst game is playing out very well. They've under uh, estimated and brought down these estimates very much, so much so, if you read the blog, that more than 80% of the current group that has released have meet or beat earnings. So what are we looking at? We're looking at more revenues, but because of bigger undercurrents of expenses, we are not seeing uh, the earnings levels move up the way they would normally move up, even though revenues are increasing. We've also got underlying costs increasing. The analysts saw that. They've been downgrading and pulling back on these, and the companies are doing what they're supposed to. So everybody's playing the game very nicely. And so what does that mean? It means any movement we have is technical motion. That's all we're seeing. Trade talks this morning, softening. They're saying, hey, you know what? We don't have to have this from China. Let's get this. And so everybody wants a deal to be done. You know, the administration is looking towards this next uh, election term as a place to beef up the Republican Party. And that's all going to help with this earnings pressure and the movement in the market, which is, you know, why they are calling for the Fed to move down. And these are just all little strings that are getting pulled. For us as traders, we just need to know that the strings are being pulled and what's actually happening. And what's actually happening is that growth is still slowing and we're still just grinding to the north. But we should stop out here after a fairly big run to the upside. We should be able to take a breath fairly soon, pull back into some nice support zones where we can begin to aggressively trade long and hold those levels. At this point, any kind of long motion should be at the pullback into support and getting out at resistance. There's nothing that says these charts can continue. They are still negatively divergent. One of the ones that is most negatively divergent that wasn't is the NQ. We've got to watch for these guys simply because um, the rotations, remember, if we look at FANG, right, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, we look at that group, they are increasing expenses and still building revenue stream, though not as quickly. And that's what's going to happen with an aging uh, technology base, right? The aging technology company, that's what's going to happen. And so that's what we are watching. We're also watching these companies try to transform themselves. Apple is trying to move to a services industry versus a hardware space. And so we're seeing a lot of things drift. And what that's doing is giving us this curve. We can see this flattening action as these big players stall out. Now, does that mean it's the end of the road for them? Of course not. But we are going to see a rotation. People are saying we're going to roll into the semis. Here comes a sneeze, folks. I'm really sorry about that. Hopefully I cannot give it to you, but here it comes. Okay, actually, I stifled it. There we go. So as we're moving through and over this edge, what we're going to see, again, is a fade and a rotation. Like I mentioned before, semiconductors pushing into the space. We're going to see a new shift of leadership. We're not quite sure how that is, but we certainly do know that security 
and security networks are starting to really show up on a lot of different things. But we were talking about that at the beginning of last year, starting to watch these. They've just been slow going, and we're going to see a lot of those guys in the NQ right now, technically divergent. You want to watch for those edges. We still have resistance at 62 to 65, 76, 62, 76, 65. Above that, 76, 80. Wait for where everybody's buying, folks. That's 76, 16. If you want to get a little aggressive, 76, 35, and then see what's going on. But for me, I'm going to try to be very patient here and watch for the deep rotation to get engaged. Taking a look at the YM, this one, which was the most divergent, has turned on Friday particularly, we saw this massive move. Okay, what do we know about fast moves? They become failed moves. Does that necessarily mean that the upside's gonna fade? No, it doesn't, but what it does suggest is that this move is too swift, and it's gonna come back in and fill in this auction profile right around here. We have some divergence, so you know that the highs are places to short, but if we come back and we stay above this 390, 26,390, we are going to move back to the upside, 26,586 is a big resistance zone. Not sure if we're gonna get there. We'll take a look at what's going on at some of the individual instruments in the Dow during the uh, morning webinar. All right, let's take a look at oil. As I mentioned, this was great because Friday I said, hey, listen, what are we looking at? We're looking at a sell zone and it did exactly that came in and really did fade off of that level very, very nicely. What's it doing? Coming into support. What's going on with these guys? Well, there's a lot going on here. Uh, we are seeing Chevron by Anna Darko. We're seeing a few other small uh, companies merge or the purchase of them. They are really still trying to trim the fat, take their competitors out of the way, or simply align forces. And now we just here that you know because the saudis and russia realize that what the us is going after is market share they are now saying well hey maybe we'll increase our output so that we don't give over more market share to the us and so what that's doing is giving traders this notion that you know we could pull back even more that being said this is a big bounce zone, and you can see it right here this morning. They're trying to lift up over the edge. If we can't get up over 63.40, this bounce is not going to hold. It simply is not. That's just the way it runs. Take a look at this, right? You push something uphill that's got a negative force. It's going to have negative pressure. Come back down on it, and we'll have to see who wins this battle. If the buyers win this battle, we'll be up here. My thought is... We're going to come right down into heavy congestion. Could it come all the way down to 61.90? Potentially. I'm looking at 62.20. This was a very big rise up. And now we've got to pull back into support. So we'll see how that goes. Lastly, gold. Wow. Take a look at that. Very deep fade. Very, very deep fade. And it's a continuation from the 10th. And so what we've done, take a look. We've come all the way to baseline support, and that baseline support is going to be a big deal. So what do we think? Is it a short? Well, not really. Not right here it's not. Why? Because everybody bought here. See, they bought here, and they bought here. But Emery, it's coming all the way back down. Yes, it absolutely is. But look at the divergence. We've got candlestick bodies really sitting lower at this juncture, and momentum is sitting flat. So what do we need to see? We need to see a bounce that pulls back and begins to hold the 1291. I just saw it lose 1291. So at the bounce up into there, it's still a sell zone. But if it stabilizes, this is going to be a buy zone on the day. And it's been a buy zone since the beginning of March. And so that's what we have to assume. Just like what we saw in gold, excuse me, oil, just a moment ago, this is the reverse we saw oil up here doing the same thing. This is gold down here doing that very same thing. Could you say, hey, I know it's not moving up, but I'm taking the long. You absolutely could. What do you need to do? You need to make sure that you hold your stop engaged properly. All right, that's it. Good luck trading.